former Republican lawmaker Denver Riggleman has basically shed light on how extreme some Trump cult members are. And this former lawmaker describes how his own mom turned on him once he was critical of Donald Trump. Now, this is information that we're getting from an upcoming book release that I think is very transparently opportunistic, but we'll talk about that in a moment here. I want to get to what he says about his mom when she found out that he criticized Donald Trump. Zach Schoenfeld of The Hill writes, Denver Riggleman, a former GOP lawmaker from Virginia and House January 6th committee aide, wrote in his forthcoming book that his mom texted him saying she was sorry you were ever elected after the then Republican lawmaker went on CNN to condemn QAnon. Savage. What will it take to wake you up, son? I love you so, but cannot stand by and listen to your elitist attitude and being praised by elitist journalists and Democrats. Riggleman's mother texted him. Congratulations, she said. You are now part of the swamp. <laughs> I'm sorry you were ever elected. Goddamn. You are officially a politician. I have cried over you, and my heart is broken by you. Riggleman wrote that the text came after CNN Jake Tapper interviewed him on October 14th of 2020, nearly two weeks after the Virginia Republican-sponsored resolution condemning QAnon that passed the House with 17 Republican no votes. I knew my mom and I were not on the same page politically, but this is something else, Ruhlman wrote. Any hope for a mostly normal relationship seemed dim. She was damn near disavowing me. Now, let's just put things into perspective here. This is a former GOP lawmaker, and his mom is also a Republican. But this goes to show you the differences between just standard, semi-moderate Republicans and Trump sycophants, who are also QAnon adjacent, if not outright full-blown QAnon subscribers here. So this is his own mom believing that her son is part of the swamp. Most parents, I'd argue, regardless of how corrupt their politician children are, they probably never believe that their children are part of the swamp, right? That cognitive dissonance is not going to allow them to admit that they raised a piece of shit. So, I mean, like Kirsten Cinema, there's no way her mom is thinking, wow, you know, I really hate that my daughter has sold her soul to Wall Street. I, I don't know that that would be the case. Same with Ted Cruz. I'm sure his parents love him, despite how weird he may be, which they won't admit. But this is an individual who's saying, no, 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 my own son is now corrupt. He's part of the swamp for criticizing a politician that I value more than him, my own flesh and blood. Now, there's a bit more details that I want to get into here because it seems as if his mom has a history of being an abusive piece of shit. The former Virginia congressman describes his mother in the book as being solidly Republican and religious. Shocker there. Riggleman wrote that she kicked him out of the house after he abandoned his Mormon mission, but they still stayed in touch afterward, and their relationship only improved when he unsuccessfully ran for Virginia governor in 2016. He later won a House seat in 2018, only to lose the Republican nomination two years later as controversy grew over his officiating of a same-sex wedding and more moderate voting record. This is in... Uh 2020, folks. In his final months in office, the former intelligence officer, Deep State, became an outspoken advocate against QAnon and Republican support for the conspiracy, including from Trump. My relationship with my mom made it through my break with her Mormon church, Riggleman wrote in his book. I wasn't sure if it could survive the Church of Trump. That's a sad statement. After their relationship soured, Riggleman wrote that he and his mom only reconnected when his sister's health took a turn for the worse, but the former lawmaker said he never told his mom about his work on the January 6th committee. Quote, if I can help even one person turn away from this fringe conspiracy culture or recognize Trump for the un-American grifter that he is, it would make everything worth it, Riggleman wrote. I'd be especially happy if that one person was my mom. You actually, believe it or not, don't have to associate with abusive family members. If you're younger, that's a different story. If you're economically attached to your parents, then you kind of have to abide by their rules while you're living under their roof because you could endanger yourself if you, for example, come out as gay or come out as a socialist and they don't like it. So you kind of have to play along with them. However, once you move out, once you're a grown up, you don't have to put up with this abuse. And I feel like most people don't really acknowledge that even if they might feel it to their core. So I, for example, as a gay man, have had to cut off multiple members of my own family who has called me, you know, really terrible things because they are homophobic. And guess what? I'm 
much, much healthier and happier because they are no longer part of my life. So that to me is not something that I feel like I lost. I feel like I've gained something in terms of like better mental health by disassociating with these people and understand that this is a loss for them. Like if Riggleman said, okay, mom, I'm never going to see you again. She's the one who has to die alone now that her son isn't going to talk to her. So it's weird how this power dynamic exists where these abusive parents feel as if their children have to suck up to them. When in actuality, as you grow older, you know, you become more lonely. You become, you know, an individual who I'm assuming most people logically want to be associating with their children and grandchildren. But, you know, your mom, if she's going to treat you like shit, cut her off. There's no need to kiss up to her. And the fact that, you know, she was willing to forgive you after you left the Mormon cult, but won't forgive you because you left the Trump cult, that says a, a lot about her. It says your mom is deranged. It speaks to her character as an individual. And I mean, drop her. You don't need her, Riggleman. I don't know his history as a Republican, but just the fact that he was willing to officiate a same-sex wedding tells me that at least socially, he is indeed more moderate when the moderate Republican is kind of like, you know, Bigfoot. You might see sightings once in a while, but those photos, if you look a little bit closer, they're usually fake. So they usually don't exist. I'm sure that this is like an economically conservative individual who doesn't care about, you know, protecting families on welfare, wants to cut social safety net. But either way, like, if you're actually socially much more liberal, great. I want to encourage more Republicans to leave the Trump cult and stop being cowards and just to be more critical of Donald Trump. You know, Ted Cruz said something to the effect of, well, you know, the reason why most Republicans don't criticize Donald Trump is because we're afraid that he will criticize us. Yeah, but except for the party that complains about masculinity, shouldn't you be leading by example and not be cowards, not be afraid to criticize Donald Trump because he may push back against you. But of course not, because Donald Trump can end their careers like that if they disobey him. So as a result, they're all just like keeping their mouths shut so they can appease Daddy Trump. And it's really embarrassing. And I think that is quintessential beta male behavior. But I want to get to a different element of this story, and that is how sleazy it was for Riggleman to release this book. The January 6th committee is, I think, justifiably angry that he's using his inside information as an ex-staffer of the January 6th select committee to profit off of their investigation literally just one day before the final public hearing is set to take place. It is nakedly opportunistic for him to, on one hand, claim that Donald Trump is a grifter, and that's correct, but then release this book a day before the final January 6th committee I mean, I don't know if he timed that, but to release it now, it feels disgusting. And he's not alone. There's so many journalists who will release devastating information about Donald Trump. And they save this information, don't release it to the public. And they withhold this because they want to gin up more controversy or headlines ahead of the release of their book. And that's so disgusting. That's so disgusting. So I don't like when people do this. But he's doing that. But regardless, I still want to talk about the story because I think it's interesting. And since we're on the subject of the final January 6th committee, well, that is going to air on Wednesday. And the committee is expected to release its final report, conclusions, and most importantly, recommendations. And there are reports that the committee might unanimously recommend that Trump be prosecuted by the Justice Department. So that is certainly something that you're going to want to pay attention to. So this is important and it feels really sleazy that you have this ex-staffer from the January 6th select committee trying to profit off of this panel. I mean, if you want to write a book in a couple of years, okay, not that big of a deal, but to do it now before they release their final report, you just, you just look like a grifter, an opportunist. Uh, but either way, Sorry about your mom. Seems like she's a piece of shit. Riggleman should definitely disown her for his own well-being. But either way, uh, I don't really care about their family dynamic. I just want to talk about this because I think it really exposes how insane the Trump right is. Like, again, this is no normal political alliance. Trump has this cult of personality and people will sacrifice members of their own family if they're not loyal to Donald Trump. And that's the way that cults operate. If you leave the cult, you're oftentimes disowned, isolated, and the same type of dynamic, the same characteristics of traditional cults are being seen here. So I think it's absolutely fascinating and genuinely sad. Mike is a total shit lip. Shit lip. Shit lip.
Once he started chilling for the DNC, I stopped watching. So I definitely won't be hitting the subscribe button or turning on notifications by clicking the bell. No way. It's very sad, I know.